Hi, I'm Andrew from the YouTube channel Follow Andrew. So if you like this content and you want to see more design, HTML, CSS, web development type of stuff, come on over to my channel and uh, join me there. There'll be a link down in the description where you can check out and join me over my channel. Now, in this series, we're going to be covering building a custom WordPress theme from an existing HTML template. Again, the link for the template is down in the description, so you can follow exactly along with the same steps I'm doing. But this step and process should be able to be applied to any existing HTML template so you can convert your own to your own existing WordPress theme. So I've been developing on the web for, I don't know, over 20 years. And I think I first started using WordPress back in 2005 or 2006. I've kind of been playing around and using that ever since. So I hope you learned something. Don't forget to share this content and uh, let's get started. All right, in this tutorial, we're going to be converting this design here into a custom WordPress theme. Now this design is a fully responsive design and it is based off of Bootstrap. And uh, I'll just kind of show you how the design here looks. So you can see that it is responsive, meaning when I break down to a mobile point, we get the mobile media query. Uh, we have the sidebar on the left, the navigation, we also have a few pages that are particularly important to blog style websites. For example, we have a home page that has a little featured slider here and a few things like that. We have a post page. This would be what an individual blog post would look like. Notice how on the bottom here, there is also a comment section with nested comments and replies as well. And then we have what is known as a blog page. So this would just be like a static page, like an about or a contact page or something like that. We have our blog archive page, which would list all of our blog posts in some sort of archive fashion with our next links as well. And then we have a contact us page just to kind of simulate a simple web form that you can also enter. So again, all the pages on here are fully responsive in this uh, layout. And we're going to be converting this entire template into a custom WordPress theme. Now, WordPress themes are really nothing more than a hierarchy of template parts. And what I mean by that is in this theme right here, I'm just going to divide this into a couple little sections here. So this area here at the top, right, this area, we would typically call like the page heading or the title. And this area over here, this entire sidebar area, we could call that a sidebar, we call it a heading. This area right in here is called a navigation. This area over here, we would call our content area. And then if we get clear down to the bottom here, of our page, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit right here. This section right here, right, we could call the comments section. And then at the very, very end down below, we would call our footer area right here, uh, our footer, right? So this gray bar at the bottom. So in other words, all websites have kind of some sections to them. And really all a WordPress uh, template or custom theme does is it takes all those various sections and splits them apart into individual files. So it's so, sort of like creating components from your template. So instead of having just one big long HTML file, I have many, many separate pieces, one with the header, one with the content, one with the footer, one with the sidebar, one with the menu. And then WordPress sort of puts all those back together into a single uh, long file as needed. So when we're creating our WordPress theme here to start, we're going to be doing a fairly basic theme, but it will have all the features of a custom WordPress theme. And we're gonna start out with the required files that you need in order to set up a WordPress theme. So again, this tutorial assumes there's some prerequisites here, of course, we're not gonna be designing this from scratch. I've done that in a previous video, this particular layout. And this assumes that you've already got WordPress set up and installed on your local server or on a live web server somewhere as you will need to have WordPress installed and running in order to create the custom theme. So assuming those two things are already complete, let's go ahead and, and uh, complete this process. Now I will make this particular theme available in the description so that if you want to follow on exactly with my same template, you can. But the process here really applies to any sort of template that you're going to be creating. So let's get started with the first required template files. Okay, now I want to first show you the structure of a WordPress theme and where those files need to be uploaded. Now here in this sidebar here, I've got my main uh, WordPress directory. So this has all the WordPress files that are installed when you unpack and download the zip file. There's a folder in there called WP content. And inside of the WP content, there is a folder called themes. And this is the folder in this area where you will put your specific theme. 
So what you would do here is you would create a folder. So I'm just going to create a new folder here and I'm just going to call my theme follow Andrew. And once we have our folder in place, I've got this little directory here that's called my theme template. So I'm going to drop that in this as well as we're going to be referencing those HTML and CSS files quite often. So to make it easier, I'm just going to drop that template, which has my just basic HTML and CSS files that I just barely demonstrated for the actual template we'll be converting here inside of this template folder. Okay, so once you have that in place, you can go ahead and open up your follow Andrew theme or your folder inside of your code editor. So I'm going to switch over to VS Code. That's the code editor that I'm going to be using here to set up my, uh, to do all the development here in PHP. So the first thing we need to do is create all of the folders and files that are required for a WordPress template. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those here in my follow Andrew theme folder. So the first one we're going to be adding is called the assets folder. And the assets folder is going to have several subfolders as well. So I'll come inside of my assets and I will add the first one, which is going to be CSS. And then I will add the next one, which is going to be our fonts. And then I will add the next one, which is going to be the images and one more, which is going to be the JavaScript. Okay. So assets has all of those inside of them. Of course, we're going to be placing our CSS files and things like that in there in a minute. Uh, the next folder we're going to create here in our main directory is going to be our classes. So we'll just create that. Now this folder is going to be used to create any PHP classes that we'll be using for various functions to override WordPress functionality. Uh, we're going to create another one here called INC. So whoops, we're not, I created that one in the wrong spot. This uh, needs to be outside there. So INC stands for includes. And that's going to be any sort of include files that we want to also include. And we'll go ahead and create one more here. And this one is going to be called template-parts. So this is a common folder you'll see in many WordPress themes. It just allows us to split little individual parts of our template up even further. And again, this is all sort of uh, common, but you can really split up your template and theme however you want. There's no really set rules here. And then we're going to create one more. Whoops, I did the same thing here. I need to create this as a, not as a subfolder here. And another one called templates. So these are the required folders that we have. Assets with all these subfolders and then classes, ink, template parts, templates, and, and then this is our master template. So again, these aren't, I shouldn't say required, but this is how we're going to build our theme. Now, the next thing we're going to do is set up several files. So these files, there's actually only two files that are required for a WordPress theme the CSS file and the index.php file. Those are the only two that are required. Everything above and beyond that is sort of how you want to customize and do your WordPress theme. So we'll go ahead and start off here and we're just going to create all the blank files. We're not going to be adding any content whatsoever at this point. So the first one here is going to be um, our 404.php. This is the file that will be served when we get a 404 server error. The next one is going to be a file called archive.php. This file will be responsible for delivering an archive. So a good example of this is like a blog post, the index of all the blog posts in a hierarchical format. That would be an archive page. The next one here is going to be the comments.php. So this template file will be responsible for displaying and serving up comments in our uh, theme. The next one here is going to be one called footer.php. And this is going to be responsible for the footer section, right? The very bottom of your website. The next one here is going to be our functions.php. And this file has special meaning in WordPress because in your functions.php file is where you can override and initiate different features of your theme inside of WordPress. So your functions.php file is going to be raw PHP code typically to override and change the way WordPress works fundamentally. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and add one called header.php. So this is going to be the, the file responsible for the top head section. That would be anything in the head, really whatever we determine we want to put in there, the header. Uh, the next file is going to be our index.php. So here is the first required file. So you have to have one called index.php. It serves as the fallback. So if WordPress can't locate a specific template file in the template hierarchy that it needs, it will always fall back to index.php. That's why it's required. Uh, the next one here is going to be called page.php. 
This template file will be responsible for displaying static pages, so things that aren't blog posts or aren't blog archives, like an about page would be a static page. So that's the template file that will do that. The next one here is going to be called, we'll just add a readme.txt, and this is just gonna be a text file where we can put like copyright notices and things like that. If someone else were to download our template, we can put some information in there in a readme file. And then the next one here is going to be called search.php. So this is the template file that will display search results. So when somebody comes over to your WordPress site, right, and they hit this search button up here, what's gonna show up there? Uh, the next file here is going to be our single.php. And this file will be responsible for, responsible for displaying single blog posts. So when you click on an individual blog post, that's how that template file or who will display. And then the last file that we need is going to be our style.css. So again, this is the second required file. You have to have a file called style.css. This is the master style sheet for your website. So over here on the right hand side, you can see that I've got a WordPress site running locally. This is just the default 2020 WordPress theme that I have installed. So I'm just gonna kind of show you here. So when I come over here and do a search, so I'll just search for hello and do a search. You can see that I've got some results that came back, right? The results that are being returned are going to be using this search.php template. So how this page looks will be determined by the, the code in that template. Uh, if we come over here to a blog archive, so if I click on like posts from March, 2020, it's gonna give me all of the posts from March, 2020 that would be using the archive.php template. If I click into an individual post, like here's my hello world post, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that post. You can see I'm now looking at this individual blog post. This one's going to be using the single.php template file. Of course, my comments down here at the bottom are going to be using my comments.php template file, et cetera, et cetera, right? You kind of get the idea there. So these are all the required files that we'll be using in this example, but again, there's really only two that are required from WordPress. So uh, the last little thing that I'm gonna add here to our theme folder is a screenshot. So a screenshot is typically just a little screenshot of what the theme looks like. If you were to put this on the WordPress store, it would show up You know, when you're searching for themes as a little thumbnail of what that theme would look like. So I'll go ahead and add that next. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just taken a quick screenshot here. So if I click on screenshot, you can see this is the screenshot that I've added into the site. And uh, that's how it looks. So let's go ahead and now look at one more thing here. And this is called the template hierarchy. Now we've just sort of determined to build our hierarchy in a sort of similar uh, common fashion, I would say for WordPress themes. But I wanna show you kind of a detailed look at what's known as the template hierarchy. So you can see here, over, over here on the right-hand side, it's a little easier to read this from right to left, I think, but the index.php file in WordPress is the fallback template file. Then there's one you can create called singular. So if your single blog posts and your pages look the exact same, you can just create one called singular that essentially will act for both. And there's one in here called archive, you can see, and archive will catch is the catch-all for all archive pages. But if you want to get more specific, you can create one called category. So each one of your blog post categories can have a different look and feel. Or maybe you can sort them by date. And you can see you just move from right to left through this screen and you can see there's a million different uh, ways you can sort of create and customize your WordPress themes based on all of these different types of files. So the last file that we haven't added yet that we will add is this one right here called front page. So oftentimes the main landing page of a website looks different from all the other pages of a website. So if you want to do that, you can do it two ways. You can create one called home.php, which will work for both the blog posts and the index pages and also the static front page you can see. If you want to get more specific, you can create one called front-page.php to use instead. So that's the last file we'll create here. But again, that you can kind of reference this dialog to see all the various types of template files you can create for your WordPress theme. So I'll jump back here to my code and we will create one final file in here called front-page.php and add that one in there. Okay, so now let's make it so that we can actually use this WordPress theme. So we're gonna come over here to our style.css file 
and add just a couple of elements in here to the head section. So WordPress files have a style CSS and at the very, very top, uh, they have a comment section. So it's just like you would do a normal CSS comment like this. And then you're going to add various things inside of here and WordPress will use that to display when you go to install it. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. But the first one we're going to add is one called theme name. And I'm just going to call this uh, my follow Andrew theme. But again, this is whatever you want to call your theme. And the next thing here is going to be our text domain. And I'm just going to call this follow Andrew as well. And then the next thing in here is going to be your version. So I'm just going to call this version 1.0, 1.0. And then you can add a description of your theme. So I'll just say a fancy uh, WordPress. We'll call this a fancy left sidebar theme. And then you can also add some tags. So I can call this uh, left dash sidebar responsive fancy. And then I'm going to go ahead and create the author. That's Andrew Wilson. And then you can do what's known as an author a U author URI. So this would be the URL, right? If you have your own website or something, I'll just do HTTP colon slash slash youtube.com slash follow Andrew. Uh, again, you can place any sort of URL there. I suppose we need HTTPS. And there's a few other ones in here as well. For example, you can add the license type. You can add some other additional things. Again, on the WordPress codex, you can see all the available things you can add inside of this comment. But it's always the very first thing in your CSS sheet and needs to start on line one. So we add that in there and that's pretty much all we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that file. And now that I have that uh, file with all these required sort of metadata, if you will, in your style sheet, I'm gonna log in here to my WordPress site in the back end. So I'll come down in here and I'll say login. And I've just got this set up with a little username and password for uh, my Andrew, Andrew. And this is the WordPress backend. So now when I come over here to my appearance and over to my themes, you'll notice that there is a new theme here. I'm gonna pull this over just a little bit. So you can see there's my new theme. So I've got the default theme installed, which is the 2020 theme that comes with WordPress. And now I've got my follow Andrew theme. So if I click on theme details, you can see all these details over here in the right hand sidebar. That should that should make sense now, right? So there's my theme name, there's the version, there's the author. If I click on this, it'll take me to the link. There is my description. Here are all of my tags that I added. So all that information is pulled directly from your style sheet. Okay. And then of course, here is the screenshot.png file. So that's coming from right here, my screenshot.png file. And they might have a specific size. I didn't even double check that on requirements here. I just sort of snapped one and uploaded it. But double check the codex. They might have a requirement on the size for this particular image. But it works as long as you have one called screenshot.png in your theme folder. And that's pretty much it. So once you have those required files, you should see your theme here appear. Now I'm going to go ahead and activate this theme. So all you have to do is click activate. And this will essentially make my new theme become the active theme. So now I'm going to switch back to the main front end and you will see that there's really nothing here. It's completely blank. I don't see any posts. And that's because all of my template files are completely blank, right? There's nothing to them. So now we're going to start to actually flesh out these WordPress template files. So the one we're going to start with is the home page. And remember that is what we set up on the one called front dash page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into this template site file. Remember, this is the theme, rather the template that we're converting into a custom WordPress theme. This template is available in the description for download if you want to follow along with the exact code I'm using. But of course, these uh, tips and tricks can be used for any template. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the index.html page. And this page houses, of course, all of the HTML for this particular file. So I'm just going to literally copy and paste everything here. I'm going to highlight everything, Command A, Command C, and then come over here to my front page.php file and paste. And I'm just simply going to save. So I'm going to say Command S and save. Now you'll notice that over here in the right, in the preview, I did have some things appear. So what I'm seeing now is some of the content, and I'm actually seeing my bootstrap CSS and HTML files being loaded, but I'm not seeing my custom CSS file being loaded. And that is because if we look up here in our head section, 
Notice that we are linking to Bootstrap. Let me just wrap these lines here so we can see that a bit better. Whoops. We're linking to Bootstrap via the Content Delivery Network. So this is a, a hot link, right? We're linking to Fontossum via the CDN as well, but we're linking to our own CSS sheet just with this relative file path. So this file path is incorrect because we know that our style sheet is now down here called style.css. And of course it's not in a CSS folder. Anyway, this path is all incorrect. Now what we could do is we could actually come in here and hard code the path. I could say path to file and code that all in it would actually work. It would load up my file properly. In fact, I'm just gonna show you that just to prove the point here. So I can say dash WP content uh, dash, um, let's see what I named this theme, follow Andrew slash style.css. Now let's see if that's is correct here. And oops, um, I forgot to add the themes directory there. There we go. So you can see if I hard code in the path to this CSS sheet right here, it does work, right? I get my CSS sheet and everything over here is working as expected. I'm gonna zoom out a click or two just so we can see the full sidebar. And it's all working. However, it's not a good idea to hard code in your CSS and JavaScript paths like this. And the reason is, is that if other plugins that I install inside of WordPress depend on some of these files that I have linked, WordPress doesn't know which order to load them in. And you'll, we'll see that problem when we do this in a minute. So it's a better idea to do what's called in queue the WordPress CSS or your own theme CSS and JavaScript files. That way WordPress itself can determine which one to load first and which one to load second, or if plugins require specific JavaScript or CSS files or vice versa. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna enqueue all these files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply, uh, we'll do this kind of in a one by one fashion here. So we're gonna come over to our functions.php file here. And this is gonna add our first piece of code. So we're gonna start off here with just opening and closing some PHP tags. And then we're gonna create a function in here and the function name really doesn't matter. Um, but I like to always kind of prefix my functions with a name like follow Andrew. That way my own functions names don't clash with built-in function names of WordPress by chance. So that's kind of a, a good practice there. And we're gonna call this one the register styles because that's what this function is going to do is register our styles. Okay, so the first we're gonna do is there's a function in WordPress called WP E-N-Q-U-E-U-E-N-Q -E -E uh, style. And this takes a few parameters here. So the first parameter is the name. I'm just gonna call this the follow dash Andrew uh, We'll call it, whoops, I'm not gonna do a hyphen there. I'll call it follow Andrew, if I can type that correct, dash bootstrap. So the first parameter here is just a name. It's just whatever you wanna name your style sheet internally. The second parameter here is the actual URL to the style sheet. Remember that is where I showed you before where we could hard code it, right? This is the URL. However, this part right here, WordPress can figure out for us. So if we come back here, so I'm gonna say comma here, and there is a, uh, an option here called git template directory URI. So this is a function that returns the path up to your current themes directory. So that's what we're gonna use. And then we're gonna concatenate here with period. And then we're just gonna add the slash style.css. Okay, I'm gonna pull this over just a little bit here. Okay, so that's the second parameter is basically the path to your style sheet. Now the third parameter here, I'm gonna do just as an empty array for now. And the fourth parameter here is a version. So I'm just gonna say 1.0. Now I'm hard coding the version in right here right now, but in a minute I'm gonna make that dynamic so that it will automatically go and look inside of my style sheet and pull that version number we set up earlier to make that dynamic. And then the last parameter here is optional, but this is which style sheet this is going to be for. So whether it's a print, a projection, all, right, the different types of style sheets. So I'm just gonna leave that as all for now. Okay, so that looks okay. So that's what I'm gonna put inside of that function. And now I need to make this function hook into WordPress's system. So that's where we're going to say add action. 
and we're going to hook into the uh, the hook called the WP and Q scripts command. And you simply just copy and paste. Whoops, I spelled that kind of funny. So I'm gonna fix that register style. You just copy and paste your function name right there. So what this line is doing, it says when WordPress runs this hook, also execute my function. So in other words, my function will execute at that same time. So that's all we need to do there. Now let's go ahead and save. And it looks like you can see I've got an error here. It looks like on functions line seven. So I don't have my line numbers turned on, um, but it's probably because I'm missing a semicolon after this. Yes, I am missing a semicolon. Okay, so we save and that looks like that's now working properly. So now we need to test it out. So in order to test it, we're gonna come back to the front page and we're going to delete uh, this hard-coded style sheet and we're going to replace it with a PHP command here called WP underscore, whoops, WP underscore head, which stands for WordPress head. And what this means is WordPress is going to then inject all these files by itself. So we've kind of replaced that. Now let's actually see if it worked. So we're gonna refresh. I am still seeing my style sheet, so it looks like it's working, but just to double check, we can right click and say view page source. And now you can see that there's actually quite a few extra things in here that did not used to be in my head section. For example, this style, this inline style tag, um, there's this manifest, edit URI, generator, all this stuff WordPress injected into my head because it was coming from the WP head command. And then most importantly, we need to make sure that we can actually see our style sheet that we just barely loaded. And that one is, let's just do a little search for it here. Um, there it is right there. So <laughs> I called this the bootstrap CSS, but I actually linked to my own CSS. So I wasn't even thinking, but there it is. You can see that it definitely is injecting that style sheet. We just barely loaded. So now what we're going to do is we're essentially going to do the same thing for these other two style sheets, the font awesome and the bootstrap style sheets. So I'm going to come over here back. Let's kind of close this source code down. You always just want to double check to make sure the files that you think are being loaded dynamically are in fact being loaded dynamically. So let's come back here to our uh, functions file. And now we're going to essentially copy this and we're going to paste it two more times. And then we'll just uh, paste all these in one by one. So the first thing we need to do is change the name. So I'll say bootstrap. Um, then we'll say, actually this one's going to be my custom style. So I'll call this the follow Anders style. The next one will be bootstrap and the next one will be font awesome. Okay. And then we need to replace them with the paths. Now I'm not using local versions of font awesome or bootstrap. Of course, I'm using the CDN versions. So I'm going to uh, grab those URLs. So we'll come over here to the front page. We'll start here with the bootstrap one. So I'm going to copy this entire URL for the bootstrap, jump back to my functions, and that's going to be the second parameter here. So I'll delete all that and just paste in that hard-coded path to the bootstrap version. And then we can do the same thing, <clears throat> excuse me, for font awesome. So we'll grab font awesome. We'll come back here to our functions and we will replace that second parameter with font awesome and save. Now we can come over here to our front page and I can now delete all of this code because it's now being dynamically loaded via this command here. Now here's that problem I mentioned earlier. So you can see that I refresh, but I actually got a different color here for my main uh, navigation. And that is because the order of my style sheets is loaded incorrectly. So if I come over here and say view page source one more time, let's pull this open. You can see that first I'm loading my custom style sheet and notice that right there on the end, it says and ver equals 1.0. That's where that version is coming from. Then I'm loading Bootstrap. Then I'm loading Font Awesome. The problem is my style sheet is dependent on Bootstrap. So Bootstrap has to load first, then my style sheet has to be loaded second because my style sheet is overriding Bootstrap's CSS variables. So I have to have that source order correct. And that is where that second parameter that we left as an empty array comes into play. So let's come back here to our functions. And remember this empty array right here? 
what this empty array is, I'm going to line wrap here. Whoops, I keep hitting the wrong command for a line wrap. Whoops. There we go. It is an array of dependencies. So, for example, I'm just going to put one parameter. In other words, my follow Andrew style is dependent on this bootstrap CSS file. So I'm going to copy the ID or the name and just paste it right in there to that first parameter and save. And now you can see it turns back purple. So that's now correct. So let's, again, just go ahead and view the page source here. And now you can see that it is loading bootstrap first, then my CSS second, and then the font awesome because we've added that dependency parameter. Okay, back to our functions. Now I mentioned we were gonna do one more thing with that version because right now our version is hard-coded, right? We've just hard-coded 1.0. Um, so for the bootstrap, it's version 4.4.1. So maybe I'll just copy this and paste that in there. And then for font awesome, it's 5.13.0. So I can paste that one in there. But for my version, I want this to be dynamic. So what I can do is I can create a variable called version and I can set that equal to WP. There's a command in here called WP theme. I'm checking my notes here. I don't have all this memorized. Um, and then we say get. And then in here, we can say version. Okay, so basically this WP theme get lets us get any of those parameters we set up in our style sheet. So this should assign our current version, which is declared in our style sheet right here as our property uh, as this variable. So now I'm gonna take this variable and we're gonna replace this 1.0 with that variable and save. Okay, so now let's just double check and make sure that worked so we can view the page source. So we can come over here and look at our style sheet right here and it does say version 1.0. So now as I update my theme or my style sheet, I can just simply come over to that style sheet. So we'll come in here. I'm gonna change this to like 1.5 and save. And then we're gonna come over here and we will refresh and then just double check this. Let's pull this over. And now you can see sure enough, it says version 1.5. And that's because we've made that parameter dynamic. So that's how you can kind of uh, work with that. Again, the version parameter is completely optional. You don't even have to have that, but it, uh, it kind of makes sense, um, especially if you're doing lots and lots of updates to prevent browser cache issues when you have that uh, version get parameter appended to the end of the, the style sheet link. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it for our style. So we have all those styles registered and they're now running and, and adding properly. Now we need to do the exact same thing for the scripts that are down in the footer. So for any JavaScript files. So to make this simple, I'm basically just going to copy this entire function, come down here a little bit and paste. Now instead of saying register styles, I will change this one to register scripts. And I will change this one down here to register scripts. And then we'll delete all this in here and then rinse and repeat. So if we go back to our front page, we can see that down in the footer area, we have a bunch of JavaScript files. So I've got bootstraps, JavaScript files, and then I've got my own JavaScript file in here as well. So we're going to replace all these just like we did before. So let's come over here to our, oh, I keep getting lost. I have too many tabs open into the functions file, and we will do the scripts next. Okay, so we're gonna say um, WP and Q, and it's very similar, but instead of style, it's just called script for this one. And all of the parameters are basically the same. So it's follow Andrew, and we'll just start off with, I don't know, bootstrap or something. Okay, then for the second parameter, um, we are hard coding these. So we're gonna go get, not hard coding, but we're linking to the CDN version again for Bootstrap. So I'll just grab, uh, looks like first we have jQuery slim. So I'll copy that and we'll come back here and paste that in. And we're just gonna leave an empty array because it's not dependent on anything. And our theme version, we really don't need uh, for this particular one. I mean, we could add it, right, if we wanted to. So we could say 3.4.1, just like we did on the other ones. Okay, so let's save that. 
Now we're going to come over here to our footer and just like we did with the header area in our front page, uh, we need to, I've got to get, get rid of some of these tabs here. In our front page, we're going to replace down here. We're going to add that PHP command just like we did in the header, but this one's going to be called WP underscore um, foot um, like so. I actually think it's footer. Yeah. On the head, it's WP head, and then down here, it's WP footer. Okay, so, and then we can delete now this JavaScript a jQuery code. Save, and let's see if it works. So now we're going to view the page source, and we're going to come down here and uh, look at our footer and see if it actually inserted that jQuery code. So it doesn't look like it's there. I'm not seeing the jQuery, so I must have typed something wrong. So let's go double check and make sure we have that uh, code correctly in our functions file. Okay, now if we do a search here in our source code for that jQuery file that I'm not finding in the footer, you'll see it actually is still loaded. It's loaded right here. So that script tag is being dynamically loaded, but it's being loaded in the header section where I actually want it down here in my footer section. So to fix that, that's actually the last property I left out here on this WP and SQ and Q script command. So the last parameter is either false or true. And the default is false. If you set it to true, that means it's going to place it in the footer. So I'm going to save that there. And then let's go ahead and refresh here. And we should see, yep, there it is. So now that file you can see is appearing down in my footer. Perfect. Okay. So now all we need to do is let's just copy and paste this two, three, four times, I think. We need four more files. So the next one we need is popper. So this is a JavaScript um, file that is required. So we're going to put this one right inside of here. Actually, let's do these in order. I'm going to do bootstrap. Uh, oh, this is actually Popper. This is what Bootstrap requires. So Popper is a library for Bootstrap. So we'll pop this one in here, uh, no pun intended, and call it Popper. We'll just keep replacing these version numbers over here. And then we're going to grab the Bootstrap JavaScript file next. It's going to go right here. And we'll just call this one Bootstrap. And then the last one is our own JavaScript file called main.js. So this is where we need to grab this function again here. So we can come grab our git template directory. Let's delete this default one. So git template directory dot, and then our JavaScript files, remember, are in our assets folder. And inside of here, we're going to have a JavaScript folder. So they're going to be inside of slash assets slash js slash main.js. And we're just going to call this version 1.0. Now I can do the same thing here is I can prefix these as well. I can get the version number for my theme, but I'm just going to leave it hard coded. I kind of explained that up there. And we'll save and refresh. Let's make sure all of those are loading OK. And it looks like they are. So now the last thing we need to do is you will notice that um, my file here, whoops, we need to go delete all these out of here now. So we can delete all these so they're not hard coded anymore and save and refresh. And now we can see, sure enough, there is jQuery, Popper, Bootstrap, and lastly, my file, which you can see is not showing up. And that is because that file doesn't exist in the directory I claimed. So we need to go place it there. So we need to go to my uh, template. So I've got this uh, inside of my blog site template, open up my JavaScript file. I'm going to copy this file, so copy. And then I'll come into my assets folder and come into my JavaScript folder here. And we will paste. OK, so we want that to be inside of the JavaScript, which I don't think it is here. Let me fix that. I can't believe I didn't realize this before when I was creating all these files. But you can see I've got 
assets and CSS is inside of assets, fonts is inside of CSS, images is inside of fonts. So I've actually messed up these directory structures, so I need to move them all back out. I don't know if you can drag and drop. Um, let's see if it'll let me. Yeah, that's actually working. So I've got to drag all these back to the main assets folder. There we go. And then drag this JavaScript file inside of the JS folder, which it's now there. Okay. So now that's in the proper place there. Uh, that's looking fine. And let's save and refresh and see if we're now getting our own JavaScript file to load here. And I'm still not seeing that. So we still got a path issue. Let's just double check. So we have assets, then JavaScript, then main.js. Let's come over here to our functions file. So we're coming into our template directory, assets, JS, main.js, loading in the footer. Oh, whoops, we have a name conflict. I haven't updated this one. So this one is just, uh, we'll call this one main. That may be why it wasn't uh, loading. And there we go. So there's my file. There's the JS file. You can see it's loading properly. Yep. So of course you can't use the same name twice or you'll get conflict. So I hadn't updated that. So there is all of my scripts that are inside of the footer. So now we've successfully enqueued all of the style tags. We've enqueued all of the script tags, loaded those in the footer. And now my site is essentially working properly where WordPress is now managing the loading of those files. So that's step uh, one is enqueue the files. Now the next step we need to do is actually set up our literal header and footer files. So right now inside of our uh, our front page, right? We just have, we have WP head, but then we have all this extra stuff that's just hard coded inside of our template. And we want to further remove that into a separate header.php file and footer.php file. So this is kind of up to you on how you want to end up determining what content goes in your head and what time content goes in your foot. But what I'm going to determine is that everything, including the navigation, up to the main content here in the page title will be in my head, and then everything down here will be in my footer. But you can split this up again however you really want. So for me, I'm just gonna double check and look at the code here. So I want all of this stuff all the way down until I get to this uh, main title here, which is all the way down to right there, my closing header HTML tag. All this stuff I'm gonna cut. So I'm actually not gonna um, actually, I'm going to cut right here because I'm in my PHP file. So command X to cut and let's come over to the header.php file and paste. So I'm going to save that all there. Now let's come back and do the same thing for the footer. So essentially, I'm going to come down and where this closing footer ends, I want, uh, let's see, what do I want in my footer? Probably everything main wrap includes that copyright notice. So basically for my footer, I'm just going to cut out this right here. And we will cut that. We'll leave this main wrap uh, that houses everything alone. And we'll place all of that stuff inside of my footer. Okay, so we'll save that. And that looks fine there. I'm just gonna tidy that up while I'm here. Okay, now since we've cut those two pieces out, we need to dynamically load them back. And WordPress has a function for that. So I'm gonna open up my PHP tags here and it is called git underscore header. So you can see as soon as I type that in and save, sure enough, my header comes back into place. Let me comment that out so you can see that. Notice that without the header, I'm just getting my content. So if I view page source, there's right there's nothing above and below it. So that looks fine there. And it looks like I actually have an issue with my HTML. I'll have to correct that later. I'm missing a opening or closing div somewhere. Uh, but so what we can do is we can replace that with get header. And that will bring in my header. And then down at the bottom, I can open and close some PHP here. And same thing, I'm gonna say get footer. So this is very simply, this is very similar to just native PHP where you say include, right? All it's doing is just including that file and including that file, but in the WordPress way of doing that. So now when I refresh, you can see, sure enough, I've got my header, I've got my footer. Everything's getting put back together here on this main page. And that looks fine. So the next issue we need to fix is we have our header and our footer loaded dynamically. We've enqueued all of our scripts and all of our CSS files. Now we need to change some things that are uh, dynamic, like our page title. For example, if we come into our header, notice that the title tag is hard coded. 
That's going to be a problem, of course. I want this to be dynamic based on whatever page I'm currently on inside of WordPress. So that's what we're going to fix next is we're going to fix this little title tag. Two ways you can do title tags. You can manage them yourself, meaning you hard code the title into the actual head section, and then you replace this with a little command that's called like get the title, which is a WordPress specific feature. So that's method one. Method two is you just completely remove the title tag altogether from your head section and you let WordPress dynamically add that title by itself. That's the method I'm going to opt for for this video. So to do that, we need to come to our functions.php file and I'm going to add here above here, just up here on line one, there's a command uh, or a function rather that's called add theme support. So add theme support and then title tag like so. So what this is basically saying, I'll just do this in a comment here, but this adds dynamic title tag support. So in other words, WordPress is going to then manage the title tags itself. And it does that automatically as long as we have in our header.php file this WP head command. So that's another one of those uh, reasons why we have this. So now when I come over here and refresh, whoops, and let's go ahead and look at the page source. You will see up here that in the head section right now, if we scroll down here and look, so I'm going to search for that title. Uh, notice there is no title tag at all right now on this page. And that's because WordPress hasn't yet figured this out. So the reason WordPress hasn't figured out uh, to add this title tag dynamically is because I forgot to wrap this in a function. So I'm going to call this the function follow Andrew. We'll just call this theme support. So this is going to be a function. I'll go ahead and cut this and paste it in here. And then I need to add this into a hook as well. So the hook name here, I'm just checking my notes, is we're going to do another add action. And it's going to be after theme setup is when this one will be called. And we'll just copy and paste this into there. Okay, the issue I've just discovered is I actually spelled title tag, or I typed it incorrectly. It's not title underscore tag, it's title dash tag. That's the one you want to add in, add theme support. So let's save that and refresh, and there we go. Now you can see my title appears right here. It says blog site, just another WordPress site. And that's automatically being added into my page via WordPress. So that's how we're going to leave that managed. Now this title and description, of course, is coming currently from the settings inside of WordPress. So if you come into your settings general, there's my title and there's my tagline. So that's where those are getting injected from. But we can let that be managed uh, by WordPress automatically and it will inject in the proper titles according to whether it's a post or a page and whatnot. We'll look at that a little bit later. Okay, so back here into our code, uh, we will continue along. So now we have our theme support for our title tag. We're dynamically adding that. We've got our things in queued. And the next thing we're going to do is add a few more options here inside of our theme to add some extra support. So for example, for our specific site here, when we're on a post page, I'm way zoomed out here so you can see this. So I'm going to zoom back in. But we're on like an individual post. Whoops, I can't come to a post yet. Uh, but I have a specific width here. I'm just going to measure this quickly here. So you can see the width of my page is roughly, I don't know, eight or 900 pixels. So when I upload images that I want to feature inside of my posts or pages, I really don't want them wider than that dimension because they're never going to be shown larger than that. So I can add what's known as custom thumbnail sizes so that anytime I'm inside of WordPress, I'll switch over here to the back end of WordPress. When you go to the media gallery and you say add new file and you drag and drop files in here, WordPress automatically resizes those and it uses the sizes that are set up inside of your settings. So if you come to settings and then go to media, you'll notice that it has a thumbnail size, a medium size and a large size. So if you want to customize sizes beyond these three, of course, you can just change them here. You need to do that inside of your theme uh, with your with the function in the add sizes. Now, a thumbnail medium and large is fine for my needs, so I'm just going to make sure that this large value is roughly that width, and that actually works out fine, 1024. But just be aware, if you want to add extra sizes, that's when you need to go into your theme and add support for custom thumbnail sizes. 
Okay, so we've got our header, we have our footer, we have our functions.php file, which is making that title dynamic. And that's about as far as we're gonna get for this little section. Now, I just wanna mention what we're gonna be creating here in the next video. So in our front page.php file, we still have all of our content, right? All this stuff right here in the middle is hard coded. We did with div tags and content, right? We don't want that. We want all of the content to be managed by the WordPress blog. That's the entire point of, of creating a CMS system is that you can manage the content within WordPress. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up deleting all of the content out of this page. We'll change our theme a little bit to maybe put this header and some of these footer tags down here inside of our header and footer. And then we're gonna talk about the WordPress loop, which is how we can tell WordPress to query the database, pull out all of the content for the specific page, and insert it dynamically into our uh, loop or our section of content. So we're gonna be starting here with the front page and then we'll move and do all of these separate template files one by one by one so you can see how that works. And we need to take all of this hard-coded content that we added into our front page and put that inside of WordPress. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to go into WordPress here. So I'm gonna log into the back end of WordPress go to my pages section and say, add new. And I'm just gonna call this page my home sweet home. And I'll just type in something for now. So eventually I'll fix this up. But I'm just gonna go ahead and publish that. So it is now published. Now I can come into my settings and reading. And I want my home page to display a static page. And that page is my home sweet home. So we need to first create the page and then we can tell WordPress to use that page as my, as my website's home page or front page. And then we're gonna hit save changes. Okay, so now we can come over here and we can go ahead and refresh this page inside of our blog. And you'll see that, right, nothing's changing at this point. We still have all of the hard coded content. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna delete all of this hard coded content. So I'm gonna delete everything, let's see, everything in this container, I'm just gonna remove. So that container goes down to right there. And so now we just have the article and then we have our footer and our header. So that's looking pretty good. <clears throat> now the other thing I'm gonna do is for each specific page, I just wanna have basically this article tag. So I'm actually gonna take this content right here and cut that out and put that in my header.php file. So that's gonna go right below here. And then I will take, let's go back here to the front page. I'll take all this footer stuff down to that closing div tag, save, and I'm gonna put that in my footer.php file right down there. Actually, I'm gonna have this go right above the WP footer command right there. Okay, perfect. So, now inside of my template file, essentially my header has everything except the article, the main content, which is the way I want it. So let's just type something here and hit save and you can see sure enough that appears, but I want the content that I saved in that page to appear here. And this is where we're gonna finally talk about what's known as the WordPress loop. So WordPress, a loop is basically an iterator, right? Which iterates over several things. So when we save a page or a post or really anything inside of WordPress, when we save something inside of our posts or pages, that gets saved as a row in our MySQL database in my case. So what WordPress does is it dynamically queries the database, finds which row corresponds to the page you're on, pulls that information and displays it in that section. And that's known as the loop. So when I come over here, we need to create the loop code. So this is a little bit weird the way they do this. Uh, but WordPress uses a while loop. So what you can say is, um, if we have posts, okay, so if posts exist, basically, then we're gonna execute this code in here. So the next section is going to be while, and then we're gonna say have posts, while we have posts, we come down here and we say the post. Okay, so let's save that just far. So if we have posts, and then this is the iterator, this is the for loop or the while loop in this case, while there's posts, whoops, this needs to be a function. 
while we have posts, um, so this, in other words, the post is going to execute every single time as long as there's posts. So we can save that and it looks like, oh yeah, so that hadn't updated yet. So let's refresh that over here. <laughs> it looks like my web server actually may have crashed. You can see it's trying and trying to reload this page, uh, but I think it crashed. So I may need to restart my web server. I'm going to pause really quick and restart the server. Okay, so I've restarted my web server and we're back live here. So what we can do is we can call the post and that essentially makes WordPress query the database and fetch out a single post. Once we've called the post, we can then call a bunch of other WordPress functions. So I'm just gonna show you one here called the content. And this is one that actually grabs the content and inserts it. So you can see as soon as I save that, sure enough, my page now says something. So this content, of course, is coming from my page here. Let me go down to my pages. It's coming from this page right here, right? Where it says something. So instead of saying something, I want this to actually show, right? Well, I guess whatever is on my home page. It really doesn't matter at this point. But I'm just going to call this home page content. And we'll go ahead and say update. Come back here and refresh. And you can see, sure enough, that's coming in. Now I want this heading here to show me the title of the current page. Now, because that is back here in my header .php file, there's a command in here that's called, uh, actually I actually have to look this one up really quick. It's called, I think, get the title. Okay, so the command is just called the title. So I'm gonna come in here to this heading and I'll just replace this and say the title like so, and then close off the PHP and save. And now you can see it shows the current page title or post title, whatever it would be up there in that section right there. And then my content is right down there. So that's looking great. So that's really all we need right now for our front page to be mostly complete. So we have this little loop, we're pulling out the post and the content. And there's, a, there's several other things you can pull out. You can pull out the author, the date, the time, the tags, the post ex, excerpt, the post thumbnail, post images, right? All those things are available inside of WordPress commands. And it, that's going to really depend on how your theme's set up, where you want to display certain things. But we'll get a little bit more into that as we do these other template files for our page and post uh, sections. So we're going to save that. And now let's move on to another page. So... One of the problems that we have is our menu items right here inside of our sidebar are also hard coded. So, right, uh, this is this is not going anywhere. So I need to make this section dynamic. And in order to do that, I have to add another thing to my functions.php file, which enables uh, menus, WordPress menus. So let's go ahead and do that next. So we'll come in here to our functions. Let me pull this down and we will uh, add our menu options. Inside of our functions.php file, we're gonna create a new function here, and this is just gonna be called the follow Andrew, and we're just gonna call it the menus. Okay, now there is a, in order to set up your menus in WordPress, you can set up as menu, what are known as menu locations. So for example, in my website, I've got a menu location over here on the left, Perhaps I want another one on the footer. Maybe I want a different menu location for the mobile, right? So you can set up different menu locations. Uh, but for us, we're just going to set up two to show you how this works. So let's come over here and I'll pull this over again. So we're going to create an array. So I'm just going to call this one the locations and I'll set that equal to an empty array for now. And then inside of this array, it's basically key values. So the key is the menu location name and the value is like the title and a few things like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just call this one my primary menu. And the primary menu is going to be, uh, we can just call this the desktop primary left sidebar, right? This is kind of a description of your menu, really whatever you wanna call that. And then I'll add one more and I'll call this one my footer menu. And then I'll just say the footer menu items, however you wanna call that, okay? So once you have your, your uh, option declared, your function, we of course need to add in another hook. So we're gonna say add, um, actually, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's one other command we need to do inside of here, and that's called register nav menus. 
and we need to pass in this variable. So this is an array of all of our nav menu names and descriptions. Okay, so all that code is inside of our function. Then we need to add in to the action. So we're gonna add add action. This one's going to be inside of the init hook. So we'll copy and paste in our function name like we've done several times before. So this function is gonna hook into the initialize function, which happens fairly early on in the, in the hook process. And we'll go ahead and save. Okay, now that we have those active, if I come back and log into WordPress here and now go into my appearance and notice that before I didn't have an option for menus. Menus actually was not even in this menu. But now because I've added that in my theme, I can click on the menus and I now have menus available to me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our first menu. So I'm just gonna call this menu name the main menu and we'll say create. And now notice right here, I have these two locations. I have my desktop primary and my footer. So now I can select where I want this menu to appear inside of my theme. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna add a couple of options here. Uh, so for right now, I'm just gonna create a few new pages. So I'll come into my pages and hit add new. I'll call this one my about page. And the only reason I'm doing this is just so I have something in my menu in order to show right now. So we'll publish this. Um, let's add, maybe we'll add one more and we'll call it contact us. And we'll say contact and we'll publish that page as well. Okay, so now when I come back in here to my appearance menus, I have a few things over here I can add. So I'm gonna add all of these three, the default sample and then those two, and I'm gonna say add to menu. And you can see that they get added right here to my main menu. In WordPress, you can drag these as submenus and it'll appear as drop-down menus if your theme supports that or just as main items like this. And now I want to say, I want this menu to appear in my desktop primary left sidebar. So I'll go ahead and click on my save menu. Okay, so now this menu is created in WordPress. It's set to be displayed where that uh, menu location is but I of course haven't actually added the code for that menu to appear. So that's where we'll jump back into our code editor. And we're now gonna go set up what's known as the primary menu. So that is done. If we recall back in our theme, we come into our header. Our header has that entire menu. It's a little bit tricky here. I'm gonna line wrap this. But this is all of the code for that menu that's hard coded. So essentially I wanna remove all that hard coded menu and replace it with a WordPress function that's gonna automatically dynamically display the menu. So let's do that next. Now you can see here from my code, my menu is inside of this unordered list. So I have a div called navigation, and uh, this is these classes, collapse, navbar collapse, flex column. These are WordPress, or sorry, not WordPress. These are bootstrap classes that automatically enables the mobile menu and automatically does a few things like that but the actual menu itself is all inside of the unordered list. Each menu item, right, in my list here is a simple unordered list with a list item with a whole bunch of classes and things that kind of make it um, styled correctly. So essentially what I wanna do is I'm going to add some of my own code uh, right inside of this section. Now eventually I'll delete all of this hard-coded stuff but I'm gonna leave it right now because I'm going to need to reference it as I build this menu via WordPress. So the command you need is called um, WP nav menu. And with this function, it takes several parameters. So we, I'm gonna open up the function here. I'm gonna do these parameters on one line. Uh, so it takes an array and I'm gonna put each of these parameters in the array like this. Okay, so this function takes an array and the array is a set of all the different parameters. So the first one we're gonna do is just called menu. And this is the name of the menu you're trying to output. In my case, the primary menu. Menu. Remember how we registered primary and footer? So I'm gonna output the primary one right here. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is just, I'm gonna say container. And I'm gonna leave this as empty for now. I'm just listing it here so you can see a few of the option. And then I'm gonna say theme location is primary as well. Okay, 
So this means, right, when the user selected that theme location, I'm saying this is the primary location right here. And the name, uh, that should be fine right there. Okay, so now you can see if I, if I open this back up, I'm getting two menus, right? So now I'm getting my contact, my about, and my sample page. So let's go ahead and inspect these in our code over here. And you can see that, it's a little bit messy here, I'll try to pull this out. But WordPress is injecting all sorts of classes into this menu. So you can see that WordPress added an unordered list. It gave that guy an ID. It gave it a class of menu. Each of the menu items has a class of menu item, then the post type, and then the object page, item 14, item 15, item 16. So there's all sorts of stuff that WordPress injects into the menu. And you can customize all this uh, as needed, um, but it gets a little bit tricky if you want to do advanced customization because you have to include what's known as a walker class to be able to iterate over the menu to customize everything. So we're not going to get that advanced, but we will learn a few of the tools to where we can customize some of these some of these classes. So the next item we're going to be adding here is one that's called items wrap. And this declares it's sort of the template that is for the unordered list. This is what the items wrap means. So what you have to do here is you have to, this is a little bit goofy because you have to say UL, so I'm just going to open the UL and close the UL. So in other words, I'm going to wrap this with an unordered list. And then I have to put parameters inside of here where WordPress will individually add my classes. So one thing is going to be ID. The other thing is going to be a class. And then inside of the unordered list, I have to put the uh, ampersand three dollar sign S. And then when I save and refresh here, whoops, looks like I missed a semicolon or something. Oh, well, yeah, I wasn't supposed to add a semicolon right there. Let's go ahead and save that. So now if I pull this menu back, I'm going to go down one more time here. I'm trying to get this mobile menu, whoops, to disappear. There we go. Let's get that text back up here and we'll inspect the element again. And you can see here that now my unordered list has an empty ID and an empty class, whereas before it had all that WordPress injected stuff. So now I can specify whatever ID and whatever class I want. So my unordered, unordered list in my menu doesn't have an ID, but I do have all these classes. So I'll just copy those and paste that right into there and save. And then let's go ahead and see what that looks like now. Perfect. So you can see now it's got the class and it has all those different classes in there. So that takes care of the items wrapper, the unordered list. But as I mentioned, there's not an option in here to also affect the classes on the list item with this WP nav menu. In order to do that, we have to create this big, long custom walker, and it's quite complex. So what we have to do in order to get our classes on our list items is we actually have to do that back inside of WordPress admin. So let's come back in here, and you can see that if I open up one of these, um, options here for all of these different items. So here I have my contact us. Uh, there's a few options in here that I can toggle. So what we need to do is we need to turn on an option here, uh, screen options, I believe. There we go. So here it says show advanced menu properties. We need to turn on the CSS classes. Okay. And the link target. Let's just turn. Let's, well, actually, we don't need that one. That should be fine. Okay, now you can see that I can provide a CSS class for this specific option. So again, the class name I need for me is the nav item right there. So I'm going to copy nav item and we'll come over here and we'll click paste. And now let's go ahead and save that. So we're just going to do this on one for now, but you can see that my contact has the uh, nav item on it. So let's go back here and refresh and see if we can now see that appear here. So that is the first one right here. And sure enough, you can see that it still has all the WordPress classes over here, but it does have now the class of nav item, which is the one I was after. Okay, so that's looking good um, for now. And we can go ahead and add that to the rest of these. So we'll go ahead and add that to this one. And we'll add it to this one. 
and go ahead and save. So now all of those have that. And refresh. Okay, so that's looking better. Now you can also see that in our menu, our anchor tags themselves have the class of nav link. And there's no way for me to customize the anchor tag with CSS classes. So even if I come in here to WordPress and I, you know, toggle these guys, there this class is applied to the unordered list, not the actual anchor tag. And I'm unaware of a way where you can do that. So you actually have to use a custom walker uh, to make that happen. We're not going to get that far in this tutorial, but just be aware there's several other tutorials out there on doing some advanced things with walkers. But we'll just leave this with our nav item. Now notice we also have a uh, inside of our anchor tag, we have this icon. So I'm going to copy the icon here and I'll just copy this and let's actually do this one for the, we'll do the blog post one just to show you. I'm not going to do this to them all, but I'll copy this icon. This is coming over from Font Awesome. So what I could do if I wanted the icon, let's say on this, I don't know, we'll just pick the about page here. I could paste that directly, that HTML directly into the navigation label and save. And now when I come over here and refresh, uh, you can see that, let me zoom in here, I've got my icon, right? So there's the little icon appearing. So that's how you would have to do your bootstrap icons. Again, it's a little bit clunky doing it this way, and that's because we have a really specific markup that's required because of bootstrap. A much easier way would be to change your own CSS and match WordPress's uh, outputted CSS classes that they give you. Um, but of course, if you can't do that, then really you have to jump to that advanced method with the custom walkers in uh, inside of WordPress. Perhaps I'll do a video on that in the future, but for right now, we'll just leave it alone like this. Okay, so we've got these little items. Just so you can see, the only thing really this nav link is doing for us, if I inspect the element here, and I just manually add one. So I'll come in here to this code and we'll say, we'll give it a class equals nav dash link. Just so you can see, all it's doing is just changing the size and the color um, of that. So perhaps what I can do to, to get that to work is instead of calling these things nav link, remember WordPress um, gives these guys, hey, what does WordPress do? I actually don't know. Um, Looks like they're actually not giving the anchor tags any markup at all. So I'd have to go into my own CSS and edit that class and maybe perhaps move it up to the nav item. So I could do something like, let's come over to my CSS. So we'll search for the nav dash item. And you can see that the nav item has a little rule here that's for the nav link. So instead of calling this nav link, I'm just gonna call it anchor because that's really what it is, it's an anchor tag. And then I'll call this one here, anchor and save. And now they're basically, you know, having that same, same thing happening to them. Oh, here's another one over here. I guess I should just replace all these nav links. Let's do a quick search here. Looks like I have five of them. So this one will be anchor. This one will be anchor. There's another one we're going to have as anchor. Oh, they're all over the place on all these. So I'll replace that one with anchor, this one with anchor. Oops, that's, oh, that's nav link pre. That's a different one. Oh, that's a different one too. So that'll be anchor. Now let's see if that's working. So that's a little bit better, right? So now we're getting close there to um, our previous menu down here. It looks like we have some issue with the spacing which I'm not sure where it's coming from. Looks like we have one more nav link. Nope, that's the previous. So I don't know, there's a margin somewhere in here I missed, but we'll just kind of ignore that. Uh, but you can see how that's gonna work. So now that I've got those in there and hard-coded, I can come into my header and I can finally then take this old menu and delete it out because now that's being replaced by this menu. So that was perhaps the most complex thing we've done thus far, and that's the way the menus typically tends to be because there's just lots of nesting and classes all over to kind of build those menus. 
So now we have our menu working. There's our three little uh, pages we have inside of there. And they're showing up just fine on uh, both the desktop and the mobile view as they should. Okay, so that's how you build menus. Uh, now the next thing we need to do, now that we have our menu out of the way, is create, or our menu is at least dynamic, is create uh, the rest of our template pages. So we can leave all these hard-coded, all the social links would just be hard-coded likely anyway. And that's looking fine now for our uh, header. The one thing I'm noticing right here, we might as well fix while we're here, is that you can see my shortcut icon has the incorrect path. So I want to just update this. So I'm just going to hard code this one. WP content slash themes slash follow Andrew slash assets images logo.png. I think that's where that is. So if we come into our images, that's where it will be. So I'll come in here and drop it in. So I'm going to come over here to my template. Uh, can't really see where I'm looking at here. Oh, there it is. Blog site template images. There's my logo PNG. I'll drop that into my images folder. That's the little logo that's also going to appear right up there, right? Okay, so that would be like the favicon is basically what this guy is, the shortcut icon. Okay, so that's looking fine there. And now let's go ahead and move along. So we need to now finish our removing all the stuff that's hard coded. So for example, we have our site name that's hard coded right here into our site name. We have our logo. That logo is hard coded in here as well. So we need to start to uh, remove all that stuff. So we're going to start here with our uh, site name and logo. So we're going to show you how you can add a custom logo, meaning the user can go into the WordPress admin upload a logo and it'll automatically then appear in your theme. So let's go ahead and do that. So in my navigation area is where I have that logo uh, stored. So the first thing we need to do is come to our functions. And just like we've done many times before, we need to add the theme support uh, for this function. So remember, we have this function up here where we're going to be adding all of our theme support. So we're going to say add theme support. And this one is going to just be called custom dash logo. Okay, so we do that. Now what that allows, if we jump over here now to our back end and we come over here to our themes and we choose the customize action on the installed theme. So you can see I can come in here to the site identity and there's a new option in here called logo. So I can click on select logo and you can just come in here and browse to the logo. I'll just select this logo that I've got and say open. And this of course uploads it. You can give an alt text. I'll just call this my logo and say select. Of course, you can come in here and do some cropping options. I'm just gonna say skip cropping. And there is the logo. So now that I have a logo, I'm gonna go ahead and click the publish here and come back. And now that the logo is in place, I can actually output it. So let's come back here and I'm going to come back to the code here. I'm going to jump back over here to my header.php file, come down to where I have this logo hard coded, and then I can actually output it right here. Uh, so the code you need to output the logo is, uh, I forget it. I've got to look up my note. It is, um, we can do this one in an if function. So we can say if function exists. So this is just checking to make sure that the, the custom logo whoops, function exists because uh, if we're on an older version of WordPress or something, this may not work. So if that function exists, then we say the custom logo and we just output it like so. So now let's go ahead and refresh this. Whoops, I wrote all that and I forgot to do my PHP tags. Make sure you actually write that inside of PHP tags and save. And now you can see, sure enough, there is my logo and it's automatically output. 
Now you can see that the issue here is that the logo gets output, but WordPress is adding again all of these extra classes and all these things, and they don't follow with what I need, which if we come back here to our uh, header file is, scroll down here, whoops, where did we, there we go. So I need these classes, right? Because those are the classes that I'm using on my logo. So what I need to do, instead of saying the custom logo, I need to output uh, a little bit more. So what we're going to do is we're going to say instead, we're going to say custom logo ID. And this code I'm getting is just from the, the codex. So I'm going to say get theme modification custom logo. Okay, so I'm getting this variable. And then I'm going to say the logo is equal to and then we say WP underscore get attachment image. This is a little bit weird here. Source. And then we pass in this uh, custom logo ID right here. So whoops, we need to make that a variable. So we pass in that variable and that should do it. Whoops. I think I forgot a semicolon. Yes, I did. So semicolon. Okay, so now you can see that, oh, I still have an error in there somewhere. Um, call to undefined function WP get attachment source. So I must have spelled this wrong. WP get attachment image source. Yep, I forgot the, there we go, uh, whoops. See attachment. There we go. Okay, that's correct now. Okay, so now if we just uh, now this logo basically has all the information about the the image source. So now what I can do is I can just manually output uh, my image. So where right here where it says source, I'll just delete that and I'll replace that with the source which comes from um, our variable right here. So I copy that, replace that inside of there and save and refresh. And that still didn't output. I think I have short tags on, but I'll just do this the old way. PHP echo. And let's, I'm still not seeing the logo. So let's just really quick do a quick print R on this to see what's inside of this variable and make sure it has the information I'm looking for. So you can see it does have it. So there is the actual image source. Oh, it's the first, it is a multi-dimensional array and there's the width and the height. Um, so what we need to do is we need to get the uh, first parameter. So we can say logo sub zero. There we go. And there my logo now shows up. Okay, so let's close that down and save. So that was kind of a little bit of a work, but now you can see I can output the custom logo there and uh, including my custom classes. So there's kind of two ways you can do that, right? If you want to do it the easy way, you just um, you know output that simple function right there, the custom logo. If you need to have it customized and just need the path, you can grab the path using this code right there and then add that path directly into your image tag as needed. Okay, so that is now I think mostly done. So let's close this down and just double check. So everything now should be dynamic. So our, oh, we have to do that our one last thing. So our logo's dynamic, our menu's dynamic, the page content is dynamic, the page heading here is dynamic, our page title is dynamic. So everything is now being pulled from WordPress with the exception of a couple of things and that's our site name. Of course, we have this hard coded. We're going to end up doing that in widgets in the future tutorial. So you can add widgets in our footer to be able to customize those text boxes. Uh, but let's go ahead and grab the site name and add that to that uh, area right here. So to do that, we'll just delete this right here and we'll replace that with a PHP call and it's going to be called git blog info. And then this is going to be the name, whatever the name attribute is of the blog, we'll output that for the site title. So uh, that should be it. 
and we need to echo that. There we go. And now it says blog site, right? So that's basically whatever is the name of the site. So that's customizable as well back in here, right? This, this right here. So I can call it uh, Andrew's site or we'll call it follow Andrew. Follow Andrew. I can type that correctly and just go ahead and save and publish that. And now if we jump back here and refresh, right now that's dynamic as well. So we have our site name being pulled. We have our logo being pulled dynamically with custom logo upload ability. All of our menu is dynamic. And that is now pretty much there. So what we're gonna do is start off by adding some posts into our WordPress theme. So you recall we added these three pages, but we need to add a, now a whole bunch of posts so that we can mock up our post page and our post archive page. So let's go ahead and do that next. The WordPress back end. I'm over here on the post tab and I'm just going to say add new here for all these posts. So I'll just call this sample title one and we're going to be doing, I don't know, 10 or 15 of these. So I'll just do one or two and then I'll pause the video, do the rest and you can go ahead and do that on your own. So with the paragraph of text, what we're going to do here is we're going to do two things. We're going to have a paragraph of text and then uh, go ahead and add in a couple of tags. So I'll just say sample tag, another cool. So we're adding in a few tags and I'm also going to add in this to my uncategorized category. I'm going to add in an excerpt. So this is the post excerpt. An excerpt of course is optional. It's just sort of like a short description of what this post is about. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and say publish and say publish. Okay, so you can see it's giving me this sample link here for my post. But the one extra thing we need to add in here is what are known as post thumbnails. So if I come over here to my posts page and you see my sample post, if I go ahead and edit this, notice over here in the sidebar in my document, there isn't any way for me to add an image, so a featured image to this post. And we want to be able to add that to our theme because our mockup calls for those little featured images. So we need to go add that in our functions file to add support for post thumbnails. So let's move back over here to our code in VS code. And we're gonna move over to our functions file and come up here to our section where we're adding all of our theme support. And we're gonna be adding the last one right here. So let's go ahead and add another one here. We're gonna say add theme support. And this one is just post dash thumbnails like so. And we'll go ahead and save that. And now when we jump back over to the back end and refresh here, you'll see that there's a new section right over here called featured image. So what that allows me to do is now I can come in here and set a featured image. So I can choose from any existing image that's already uploaded into the system, or I can click my upload files and just go ahead and upload a new one. So I'm just gonna upload a new file here and we'll come over here because I've got all these uh, thumbnails already in place. So I'll just choose this and hit OK. So I'll open this, you can see it uploads that. I can give it an alt text, a sample image, et cetera, et cetera, and then say set featured image. And you'll notice down here, it sets that as the featured image. Now the featured image size or the width and height of that, you can customize in your functions.php file. But remember by default, that is set. I'm gonna update this post really quick before I move off of this page. You can update that in the settings reading section just kidding, settings media section, and it's right here, the thumbnail size, width, and height. So mine are gonna be resizing to 150 by 150. So now we can go back to that post, and if we view the post, you can see that it takes us to a blank page, and that's because on our template file, we don't have anything yet set up for post. So that's where we're gonna start off with our next template is an individual post page. So let's go ahead and jump back here to Visual Studio Code. And we're gonna move over and start that process. So let's come in here to our, I'm gonna open up my sidebar again. And we will open up this time. We're gonna come over here to our front page. And we're just gonna copy everything. So Command A, Command C, because most of our template files will be very similar. And we'll move over here to the one called single.php. So the single.php is responsible for single posts. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just paste and save. And now let's go ahead and navigate back to that post. I actually can't remember the post ID. Um, so let's go ahead and look here so I can get it over in the other document. 
Um, it is, I guess I need to go back here. I'm just going to click on uh, edit here so I can see what the permalink is. Um, preview, there we go. So it is post 22. I guess I have to switch out of full screen mode to see the bar here. Okay, so it is P22. So I'll just copy that. Let's move back over here to VS Code. I'm just doing this because I don't have a way to link to it quite yet. We haven't built that functionality yet. Okay, so this should give me that post. There we go. So you can see now I'm on the sample title one. There's my paragraph and my text. And that's pretty much it. That's all we technically need to do is just simply have a this exact same content in the single.php. So what we can do, however, is we can then split up our posts, our single.php posts into different types. So for example, I may have a post that's a gallery, just pure images, or I may have a post that is a full entire article, or I may have a post that is a video. So there's different types of posts inside of WordPress. And we can split those different template parts up into known into what are known as template parts. And that's why we created a long time ago, we created this folder called template-parts. So that's how we're gonna be make this single.php template file behave, is it's going to search for a specific template part that matches the post type, let's say. Uh, so let's go ahead and set that up. So instead of just saying output the content of the post. This is the spot we're gonna try to customize. So we're gonna cut that out, and instead we're gonna replace that with a WordPress function called get template, uh, I think it's just part, yeah. Get template part. And then we're gonna look inside of the, this is the URL, so our folder is called template-parts slash, and then whatever the content. So we'll just say content right here just like so. So the way this function works is the first parameter is the file path. The second parameter, if I have comma, and then I have another uh, name in here, this is the type. So something like that. Now I'll show you the way this works. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come, I'm going to save this and notice that my content disappears because I'm no longer outputting the content. I'm going to open up my template parts folder and I'm going to create a new file in here and it's going to be content-article.php. And then in here, I'm just going to simply output just like I cut out the content and save. And now you can see it pops back. So the way this little function works in our single is it looks for the file name that you have right here. If you don't, by the way, if you don't provide the second parameter, it just simply pulls up this file. But if you do provide the second parameter, it looks for the hyphenated version. So content dash article, and that's the way this works. So what this allows me to do is then I can have another template part called content dash gallery. If I have a file that's going to be a gallery or something like that. So it allows you to kind of split up and modularize all your uh, WordPress template files in another way. We're not gonna be creating tons of these. I just wanted to demonstrate sort of how this process works for, uh, for this specific post. So uh, that looks fine for this one. Uh, let's now go in and we're gonna customize this article template. So if we come into here, you can see we're grabbing the content and that's fine, but we also set up some tags. We have a featured image, we set up a category. Maybe I want the post date, the post author. So there's a bunch of information that's typically called metadata or information about the post that I may want to display alongside just the content. So that's what we're gonna do next. So let's go ahead and set up all that metadata. You can recall what the post page looks like. I've pulled up here my template file. So this is what a single post would look like. Notice that we have the published. We have a few tags with some little icons. We have a link right here that jumps us down to the comments section. We have comments with nested comments. And then of course we have a little animation that happens in our sticky header. And we have a featured image right here. And then everything in here is going to be, this is all the post content, right? So all of this stuff is coming from the post content. So we need to mock up all this extra stuff. So that's kind of how this page looks like. So let's jump back here to our code and I'm gonna open up that specific uh, template file here. So that is our 
post page, our single post one that we have mocked up here. And we're gonna grab some of this HTML so that we can paste it over into our PHP template. So let's cruise down a little bit into this section right here. Okay, so uh, what we need is we need this little uh, published three months ago. We need that. Uh, we need the container. I guess we need a lot of stuff in here. So let's grab the container first. So we're gonna grab this, we're gonna grab this. Looks like that's mostly all we need. So we'll copy that and we'll jump over here to our uh, content article and we'll paste that up there. And then of course we have this div right here we need to close. So we need to close the div for the container. Let's kind of indent this back a little bit so we can kind of see how that's gonna look. Okay, so that should be okay. So let's save that and see what that's looking like. So that's much better. So now we have our published, we have those tags and the comments showing up, perfect. So now we need to replace these so they're not just hard-coded. I'll pull this over a little bit and let's line wrap again here. So I always hit the wrong button there. Uh, one more time. Okay, so uh, we need to replace these. So instead of saying published three months ago, of course, this has to be the actual date. So here's where we're gonna pull out information from the metadata of our WordPress theme. So let's remove this published three months ago and we'll replace this with some PHP tags. And we're gonna say, uh, replace it with the function called the underscore date. And now we'll save and refresh. And you can see that now shows me the current date that this post was published. Now, if you pass in parameters into this function, there's all sorts of, um, you can format the date exactly how you want using the PHP date string formatters. So, you know, we can pass in um, all sorts of things in here and format that date exactly. So I'm not really gonna worry about that right now. You can look up on the WordPress codex, there's codex, excuse me. There's a lot of different ways you can format the date just exactly how you want. So I could literally have it say posted three months ago or posted today or, or however you want that to be. All right, now next we're gonna mess with these tags, these post tags. So they're inside of this span classes tag and then we have an icon and then we have the actual tag. So to make this a little bit easier to read, I'm just gonna hit return here on a single tag so we can kind of see that. And then I'll move these comments down as well. So they're each on their own line. There we go. And I'm gonna actually uh, just reformat this a little bit so it's easier to read. Okay, so we have this div, and then inside of this div, we have these three sections, right? We have the date, we have all of our tags, and then we have a link to the comments. So the next one we have to work on is the tags. So we're gonna, we're gonna leave that there so I can reference the code, and we're all gonna add a little bit of PHP code here. Just tap this over. And this is going to be for the tags. Okay, so to add the tags in here, it's just simply called the tags. And you can see as I save that and refresh, I get my little tags output and they automatically are anchor tags that link to the tags. And then I can pass in a few parameters into this function to customize it. So the first parameter is before the set of tags. The second parameter is what's in between each individual tag. And the third parameter is what comes after the entire set of tags. So it's a little bit weird, but basically you can see here that for us, all of this comes before the tag this comes after the tag. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna copy all of this code. In fact, I need to fix these quotes really quick so they match, double quotes. So all of this stuff is gonna come in that first parameter. The second parameter is what comes again uh, in the middle or in between each tag. So in between each tag, I need to close the span and then also add all of this again, because each individual tag is wrapped by a span tag. So I'll paste all that right there. And then the last parameter simply has to close out uh, the list again. So whoops, make sure that's a closing span. Okay, so now if we save, there we go. So you can see now each one of my individual tags is wrapped properly and showing up with my markup. Okay, so now I can delete this hard-coded tag and save. So that's looking fine. Now the next thing I need to do is add a link here to the comments. So we're gonna do that little section next. What we're going to do is delete our hard-coded number that says three comments. And we're gonna replace that 
with a little PHP or rather a WordPress function that's called comments count. And what this does, um, actually it's not comments count, it's comments number. We'll save that. Oh, whoops, I forgot to close my PHP right there. And you can see right now it says no comments, right? So we're going to come over here to our comments.php file, which is currently empty. This is our template file and paste all the code for our comments. So all of that is in our template file, blog site template. And we can come down here to our post we've been working on and we'll come down here to our comments section. And you can see there's quite a bit here, but it starts right here. There's this thing called comments wrapper. So I need to start right there and basically copy all of the code all the way down to where that wrapper ends right there and come over here to my comments.php file. So I'll close this down and we'll close this down and we'll come back to our comments. Whoops, I didn't open it. Comments.php and paste. All right, now there is a lot of code in here that we're gonna end up deleting because WordPress is gonna provide all this dynamically, essentially all of this code. So what we can do now is uh, start replacing all of this. So let's get rid of my sidebar here. And we're gonna sh just going to start piece by piece. So again, this is one of those sections that if you can find an existing theme that you like the comments on, I really recommend like the 2020 theme, just copying their comments file, pasting it right into yours and be done. But just for the sake of this video, I will go over this uh, really quick here. So inside of this header two, we're going to be writing a little bit of logic. This is the comment reply title. So I'm going to open my PHP and close it here. So here I can say if, and then here's where I'm going to do a little logic here. So I can say if we don't have, this is a PHP command that's called have comments. In other words, if this post does not have comments, do what else? do something else. So in other words, I can change my title based on if there's comments or not. So if I don't have comments, I can simply just echo out uh, something like leave a comment. Okay, we'll just do that. Otherwise, if I do have comments, I can echo out uh, the number. So I can say get, whoops, I can say we'll just echo something like, I don't know, We'll say get, uh, I think it's get comments count, get comments count, and then concatenate that with comments. Okay, something like that. So let's save and refresh here. And before we get any further, uh, we need to add that comments into our template so that our template here can display those comments as well. So we'll come back in here to our content article and after our content section, we need to include the comments template. So we're going to add in the, it's called the uh, comments, it's literally called comments template, template, like so, and save and refresh. And you can see, sure enough, now I'm getting all of my comments right here to appear. So that is looking uh, fine. So basically what this does is this comments template just pulls in that comments.php file and it just outputs it here directly. Now we can also do some extra code here. I'm not gonna do this, but we could do some checks in PHP to say if we're allowing comments, then output the comments template, or if there's no comments, if it's a single page, if it's an archive page, don't show comments, right? We can do all sorts of logic to determine when and when we do not want to show the comments template. But for simplicity's sake, I'll just leave it turned on always on this article page article template. So now that we have the comments being output, we can come back here to our comments and then actually start to uh, fix these guys up. So um, let's see here. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to do an echo. I forgot that because I'm not seeing my title. There we go. So it says leave a comment and then I can say echo get the comments count. Okay, so if I have comments, it's gonna out output the number and then say comments. And if I don't have a comment, it'll say leave a comment. And of course there is no comments on this page, even though I'm showing some, that's because they're hard coded. Okay, so we have that. Now let's go ahead and output each individual comment one by one. And that's gonna be done inside of this comments intersection. 
So all of this code, all of the divs that belong to each individual comment and their associated replies, WordPress is going to manage completely. So I can come in here and delete that entire section of code all the way down to, oh, it looks like I have an error in my, some of my code because it's not showing me the comment one. So we can delete that. Comment three, we can delete that. And there we go. Okay, so we just have this little comments wrapper. And then we're gonna add a command in here that is going to output each individual comment. And that one is called WP underscore list underscore comments. And this is very similar to the WordPress menus that we did in the last tutorial where we can pass in a set of key values in this array to determine how those comments are output. So uh, there's all sorts of things here that you can pass into this. I'm just gonna quickly show you a list of available options. In the WordPress codex, and you can see that this function here, the WordPress list comments, takes a whole bunch of arguments. And here's all the arguments. So you can do a custom walker, the maximum depth, so how many levels deep of replies you wanna show. Uh, your style, so it defaults to unordered lists. A callback function, you can do the type of comments, so all pings, comments, pingbacks, how many comments per page, the size of the little avatar image. Anyway, you can kind of see there's lots of different options there. So we're not going to be doing that specific of in our page, but just so you can see there's several options. We're going to customize this back in our code with just two parameters here. We're going to do the avatar size one. So the avatar size, we're going to set to 120 pixels. And we're also going to set the style to output as divs instead of the default unordered list. And we'll save that and make sure we, looks like we have an error there, unexpected. Oh, this has to be an empty array, sorry. So I need to create an array. And then these properties go inside of my array. Okay, there we go. So of course there is no comments right now. Lastly, we're gonna set up the reply section so that we can actually add a comment and then test all this out. So that's down right here. You can see that I've got this little div that says respond and there's the little leave a reply. So basically we're gonna delete this and then replace that with the comment form. So we'll just take this entire div Delete all that, and we're going to replace that with uh, the comment form. Now, we are going to put this inside of a conditional. So we're going to say if comments open, and this is a function that checks to see if this current page or post is allowing comments. So if the comments are open or we're allowing those, then we're going to output our form. And so it's just a function called comment form. And just like the other stuff we've been looking at, it accepts an array of parameters. So you can specify all sorts of parameters on how your form displays, the classes and things like that. So we're gonna just add a couple of these for us. We're gonna say the class for the form is going to be set to ours as section. Um, actually, we don't even, we don't actually need to specify this. So we're just gonna leave that blank for now. Oops, I got an error. Oh, I always do that. We don't need a semicolon right there. There we go. So that's looking correct now. So the class form, um, we'll go ahead and add one more. So this one's going to be the title underscore reply before. So this is the title reply before text. And we're going to do that as a header to and it's gonna have the ID, uh, whoops, header two, ID equals, and again, you don't need any of this, this is just a sample here. Um, reply dash tile, and it's gonna have the class of comment dash reply dash title. Okay, so that is before, and then the title reply after is going to be just closing that header two out. H2. If I can type correctly. Close that out and then save. Oops, I have another error in here. What did I do this time? Oh, forgot a comma right there. 
Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to back this up and I'm going to zoom back out so we can kind of, whoops, wrong zoom. Let's zoom back out our page here back to a normal default level. So now you can kind of see it says leave a reply. Um, that's coming from, you know, our header two over there inside of that header two. There's the comment form. We have our name, email, website, all this stuff. And then I can actually click the post comment. So it should work correctly now. So let's go ahead and give it a test here. So I'll say this is a test comment. Name is follow Andrew. Email follow, uh, well, I guess we'll just do hi at hi.com. Website HTTP colon slash slash follow Andrew dot dev. Um, we don't need to save a cookie and then I'll just say post comment. And we get an error. Okay, so this is good to know because we couldn't actually test this function until we had a comment in there. But it's saying, hey, there's an uncaught error, undefined function, get comments count on line 15. So I think my comment actually posted correctly, but uh, I have the wrong code on the comments count. So let's scroll up and it's right here on line, this line right here where it says get comments count. It's telling me that that function does not exist. So I've got to double check my note here and see if that's spelled correctly. And sure enough, it is not. Uh, this is the exact same mistake I made earlier. It's not comments count, it's get comments number. So if we save that, there we go. Now it's actually outputting correctly. And sure enough, there is my comment. So it's awaiting approval because it hasn't been approved yet. But if you scroll up to the top, here we go, it says, zero comments because it's not approved. So let's just move over and approve this so we can see this working now. So let's jump here to the back end. I'll go to my comments, see how that test a comment did appear. There's my name and everything. I'm just gonna go ahead and click approve. Of course, you can set your WordPress settings to auto approve comments so you don't have to manually approve them on your own. Um, but let's jump back here to the front end and refresh and it's working. So now it updated automatically to one comment. It says one comments down here. There's the comment. I can, of course, click the reply button and add a reply. So this is going to be a nested reply test at test.com test at test.com. Whoops, I guess the name is just test. And we'll post that comment. Let's go back here and approve it. So let's refresh here and approve this comment. Jump back to our code and refresh. Perfect. So there's the initial comment. There is the nested comment. And of course, everything is now working properly. Now in the sample page, you'll see that, I actually think I closed it down, but my comments are slightly formatted differently in the sample template. And that's because uh, the default WordPress code that's being output is not matching 100% to my style sheet that I have in my comments. And the reason for that, I'll just explain that. I'm not going to fix it. But the reason for that is because I copied again all of my comments code from the WordPress 2020 theme. So most of my CSS was copied right from there. Um, and so all of this comments belongs to that. Now in the WordPress 2020 theme, when they output their comments in the comments.php file, so when they're down here on this little comment form, um, sorry, not the comment form, but in the actual comment list right here in the WordPress list comments, they are using a custom walker. And so they're specifying additional classes and things like that for every single element to be displayed. And I'm not doing the custom walker here. I'm just doing the default. So that's why my comments don't exactly match my CSS. Just wanted to quickly point that out. Okay. So now we have everything working properly. We have our comments, we have replies, nested comments, everything's fine. Of course, if we had avatar images set up via Gravatar, they would show up here as the actual avatar images. And that's working fine now. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the post page. Let's move on now to our archive page. So the post archives. So this is a single post. Now we're gonna do another content for the post archives. So if we open up our sidebar here, we have a file called archive.php. So we can uh, come into that file. Now the archive.php is going to be very similar to the single.php. So I'll just copy all that and come over here and paste, and then we'll remove the stuff we don't need. Um, so what we're going to do is change the template part. So it's going to be template parts instead of content article. 
I'm going to call this one content archive or something like this. Okay, and then we'll save. And then we'll come over here and create a new template part. So we'll say template parts. We'll duplicate this file right here. Um, I'm just going to, I guess I'll do it this way. So we'll call this one the content dash archive.php. We'll come into the article, highlight everything, and come into the archive and paste everything. Okay, so now let's just remove stuff we don't need. So for example, we don't want comments at all on our blog archive page. Uh, we don't need any of this um, header information. So we don't need tags. We don't need all that stuff. So we can delete all that. So basically all we're going to have is just the content, individual posts and pages that we'll be creating here. So we'll save that and let's go ahead and now pull up an archive page. Now we don't have a way to get to an archive page in our menu. So now's a good time to add that. Now there's a lot of different ways you could do this in WordPress, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a new custom item here to my menu called blog. When you click on that, it will take you to the archive page. So let's jump over here to our back end in WordPress. We're going to go to our posts. Sorry, not our posts. We're going to go to our appearance menus. And we're going to come down in here and add a new link here to our menu. And this one is going to be a custom link. And Sorry, not a custom link, but rather a custom page. And we need to go create the page first. I'm getting ahead of myself. So we'll go up here to pages <clears throat> and we'll add a new page. I'm just going to simply call this one blog. I don't actually need to do any content here. I'm just going to say publish and publish. Okay, now down under settings and we can go back here to our reading. So we can have our posts page be displayed on this blog page. Okay, so all this is basically the archive page. And then I can hit save changes. There we go. Now we can go over to our appearance and menus. And then we can go into our menu and we can come in here to our pages. And we'll say view all. We'll grab this blog one and say add to menu. Stick it right there. Now remember we do need to give this guy our classes. So I'm going to give this guy the nav item class. I could optionally give it a you know, an icon as well. And we'll say save. Okay, so that's how you can add in a blog. So now if I refresh here, you can see I've got a new page called blog. When I click that, it's going to open up the archive template. And right now you can see it just says test. So let's come over here now and set up my archive.php template. Now, because we have our setting reading section set up to show that our home page displays the static page set to this one and our post page is set to our blog page, our archive.php template is not going to show the blog post archives. The archive.php template only shows things like category archives, template archives, tag archives, custom post type archives, date based post archives, things like that. So our index.php file is actually going to be the file that's used for our blog posts uh, archives. So what we can do is we can just come in here and copy this exact archive because essentially all of our archive pages are going to be very similar. So I'll just copy this, come over here to the index.php page, and now we'll go ahead and paste and save. Okay. Now you can see that uh, this is showing up as we expect. So it's showing me, right, some things happening here, and that's all great and wonderful. Now, if we come into our template part here for our content dash uh, archive, I don't want to output the content on my blog archive page. In other words, I don't want the full blog post to appear on the archive page, I only want the excerpt. So I can say the excerpt and save, and then I'm only going to get the post excerpts for those individual posts. So here's where I need to jump back to WordPress, and now I need to create a whole bunch of posts. So go ahead, and if you don't have this, pause the video, create, I don't know, 10 or 12 posts, probably at least 10, because I think the default is 10 per page. So create 12 posts. I'll go ahead and do that. 
Make sure to give each post a featured image if you can, and then go ahead and start the video back up. Okay, so I have here, you can see a bunch of different posts now. They're all displaying the excerpt because that's how I'm currently displaying here. And now we need to go back to our posts page from our template. So our not our post page, our archive page and see how we have this mocked up. So down here in this section, you can see that we have our content, then we have our container, and then we have our post. So this little post right here is repeated over and over and over. So there's one, two, three, right? For every single post archive and excerpt, uh, that's where that's repeated. So I'm gonna copy this code and we're gonna jump back over here to our content-archive. And we are simply gonna paste that into here. Okay, so now we can begin to, let me just back that up, flesh this out. So the section right here, this is the actual where this div class is content. That's my excerpt. So I'll delete all the lorem ipsum. Let me wrap lines here again. And we'll replace that with the excerpt. Okay, and then we'll save that. There we go. So that's the post excerpt coming in here. Now this section up here, this header three is the post title. So I'll delete that and I'll replace this with the post title, which is, whoops, the title like so and save that. Okay, perfect. Now I get all of my post titles in there and that looks great. Uh, the date right here is the, the date, just like we did on the other one. And we'll save that. So there's the date. And then we have this thing that says a five minute read. Now there's currently no way we're gonna be able to implement that. There are some plugins actually that will calculate the length of the text in your post and then automatically give a suggested reading time based on average reading words. Uh, so we're just gonna kind of leave that blank for now. We actually could set this up with a custom field. So perhaps we could do that in a future tutorial where we do a little bit more advanced things, but we'll just leave it. Um, for right now, we're actually probably just gonna leave it off. So I'll come into this time here and we'll just delete the time. We're not gonna worry about that. And then we have the comments, uh, how many comments? So this was the, I forgot this one already. We've just barely did it. Uh, it's not comments count, it's comments number. I always say count and save that. So you can see no comments, no comments. And down here on one of our posts, there's the one that has two comments. So that one we added our comments on. And there's three comments on that one. Okay, so that is looking just fine like so. And I think that's about all we need for this right now. So the last thing is we need this little read more link. This should link into the actual post. So we need to make it so that our read more actually goes into the post. So all we need to do is replace this URL here that's hard-coded with uh, what's known as the permalink. And then the permalink is a term that references the actual permanent URL for the page you're requesting. So we just simply type the permalink and we save. Now watch over here as I hover over the read more link down here at the bottom, you'll be able to see right here, this one's going to page 45. This one's going to post rather 43. This is going to post 41. So now if I click on these, this will take me into that individual post. And this one will take me into that individual post. And this one will take me into that individual post. Okay, perfect. So now we have the permalinks, we have the excerpts, and the only thing we're missing now is our featured thumbnail image. And we'll do that with uh, getting the post thumbnail. We'll do that up here in our image tag. Now, just to kind of show you, there's two ways you can do this. The first, the easy way is just calling the post thumbnail like this and saving. Um, oops, I forgot an L right there. And you can see it outputs a thumbnail. Now, if I inspect this element, the problem with this is that again, WordPress creates all these classes on it by itself. And I don't really want that. I have my own image with my own set of classes. So really all I need is the URL. I want the source. So we can replace this with the thumb 
URL, whoops, and save and refresh. And you can see that will just return me with the absolute path to that thumbnail image, which is what I want. So now we can just grab this and replace that here in our source. So we'll delete the source, PHP, replace that and save. And now we can delete this little code up here. And uh, we should be getting that um, source to appear there. So let's double check. So image, sure enough, there is the image. So that should work fine. Now on my tablet view, I actually have those hidden. So I need to actually resize this up and there we go. So on desktop, they're appearing. On tablet, I have those disappearing right at that break point. And then when we get down to our mobile view, um, they're gonna, there's gonna reappear. So, or they're also hidden on mobile. So you're only, make sure you resize and get up to your desktop view to be able to see those thumbnails. Now, one important thing to note here is that if you just use the post thumbnail by default, it actually pulls back the URL for the full size image, which is a problem. So for example, if you look right here and I refresh this page here. So on this last one here, if I say view image, notice it's pulling in a very, very large image. It's just scaling it down teeny tiny, which we definitely do not want for our archives page. So with this function here, the post thumbnail URL, you can pass in a string as the parameter in here to specify which size. So in my case, I want to specify the thumbnail size. Now remember those sizes are coming here from your settings media. So there's my thumbnail, medium, and large. So I want the width 150 by 150. So now when I update that and save here, now let's come in here and refresh this. Whoops. Notice now when I click on this and say view image, it's giving me the proper thumbnail image. So definitely double check that uh, little gotcha there whenever you're working with pulling in thumbnails. Okay. So that's pretty much it for our archive page. So we have all of our posts now on our blog. So if we click on blog, we get our blog archive page. We get all of these uh, fancy titles here. And that's pretty much, pretty much it. So uh, what we need to do next is we need to add in our pagination links. So down here at the bottom, we have some links where if we can go to page two, page three, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll just add in the pagination links down below. Now, one important thing we need to do first is we need to come over to your back end and go to your settings and reading. And I'm just going to set my blog shows at most four posts. This way you can actually see the pagination links because by default there's 10 per page. So set that to four, set that to four, hit save changes. Then when we come back here and refresh, we'll actually only be able to see the four posts and then we'll be able to see the next links when we update those. So in order to do this, all we have to do is come into our index.php file right after our loop here. And we're going to add in these uh, pagination links. So uh, the code here, we'll just open and close some PHP tags and it is called the uh, posts pagination and then we save there and that's pretty much it so this will automatically output your previous next link so i can click on page one i can click on page two and you get the previous and next links in the current page depending on where you're currently at so that's pretty much all there is to that there um, are a few arguments you can pass into this post pagination um, link um, but we're not going to cover those you can go ahead and look at the uh, codex to see all the available arguments. So uh, that should pretty much do it for the pagination. So let's kind of see where we're at right now. We have our blog archive page that works fine. We have our pagination that's letting us go from page to page. You can of course clean this tile up and break things around as you want in your CSS sheet. Uh, we have our single pages. We don't have our single pages. We have our single blog posts done. Oh, whoops, we need to make that a link. So uh, we need to make this title be a link. Just like we have the read more link, it'd be nice if we could also click on the title to take us into the blog post. So let's go ahead and make that little change really quick. 
So we'll come in here to our content archive and we're just going to basically copy here this permalink code right there and we'll introduce that into the title. So we'll create an anchor tag and we will say href equals paste that in there and then close the anchor tag afterwards. Whoops, close the anchor tag. Okay, now we should be able to click the post title. Perfect, and that works as well as clicking the read more. So either one of those will take us uh, into the actual page or post. Okay, now the next step we're going to do is be building out our page. So we have our posts, but we don't ha have the template here for the page. So this will be fairly simple as it's pretty much the same as the other ones. So we're gonna come in here to the one called content article. Let's copy all the code right here. Let's create a new template part. So we're gonna say new file and we will call this one content, content, if I can spell this right, dash page.php. And let's just go ahead and do a quick paste right here. And now this one is not going to have comments. So I don't have comments on pages, so I can delete the comments template from this one. Um, I'm not gonna have tags, so I can delete the tags. I'm not going to have the date. Basically, I'm not going to have anything inside of the header. So I'm just gonna delete the entire header. All we really have is just the content for this guy. Okay, so now we can come down to our page.php. And just like we have in here our single.php, we can copy all of this from single.php and paste it into page.php. Remember, page.php is the template file responsible for single pages. So let's copy that. We'll replace this instead of article. This is going to be what we call that page, template part page, save, and that should be it. So now we have our individual pages. So there's our SAP page. There's the about page, there's the contact page, and they're all working exactly as they should. So again, pages are very similar to articles and the blog single ones are a little bit different because they have this extra information up there as well as comments down below. So that pretty much does it for the uh, pages. So the last thing we need to do before this entire tutorial is completely finalized is add just a couple of extra things with widgets. So for example, if I wanted to have this area over here be user customizable, uh, so they can drag and drop their own things in here, I would need to set up what are known as widgets. Same thing with the footer. Maybe I want them to be able to customize the footer. So we're gonna add several different widget areas that the user is then able to drag and drop content from the WordPress admin widget interface. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, those are done in the Let's see if we can cruise up here to the top here and minimize some of these things. So that's going to be done inside of our templates.pa, or not our templates, our functions.php file, where we're going to be adding some more features here. And the feature we're going to be looking at is what is known as register sidebars. So we're going to allow various sidebars, which are basically little minute widget areas, little mini widget areas in order to add stuff. So let's do that right now. I'll just move down here to the bottom in order to add these guys in. So we're gonna create a new function here, and this is just gonna be called the follow Andrew, and we'll call this uh, widget areas. And inside of this function, we're going to call a command that's called register sidebar. Whoops, register sidebar. And inside of here, this function takes an array, just like we've seen with many of the other functions, an array of arguments. And whoops, just kind of format this a little prettier. And the array is a bunch of the defaults on how this sidebar is set up. So the first thing we're going to do is there's an option in here called uh, before title. So before title. And right now I'm just gonna leave that blank for now. I'll show you what this does in a minute when we actually set them up in our actual theme here. There's one called after title, and I'll leave that one blank. There's one called before widget. So this is before widget. 
and I'll leave that blank. And then there's another one called after widget. And I'll leave that one blank. And then there is, um, so all of these are options that are in the first parameter for the register sidebar. So this is parameter one is an array of these options, okay, comma. And then parameter two is another array. And this is another set of options here. So in the second parameter, you have things like the name of the widget. So I'm gonna, only gonna create two widget areas. One's gonna be in my sidebar, one's gonna be in my footer. Whoops. So this one here will be called my uh, sidebar area, for lack of a better name. And the next one, we'll give this guy an ID. And I'll just call this sidebar-1. That's the CSS ID it will become. And then we can optionally give this guy a description. So I'll just call this the sidebar a widget area. Okay, so that's pretty much everything we need for the second uh, parameter. So let's now go ahead and come down here. Before we get too much code, let's make sure we can get this guy to load. So we're going to hook this guy into another action, just like we've done many times. So we're gonna say add action, and it's gonna be on the widgets init action. And we'll copy and paste our function name. So when the widgets are initialized, our custom function will be executed, causing us to register this new sidebar. So we'll save that. Whoops, I missed a semicolon there. Uh, looks like I have another issue here. Parse error unexpected. Oh, right here, whoops. These are all supposed to be commas. Comma, 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 because those are array arguments. Okay, there we go. So I don't get any errors. So now let's jump back to the back end of WordPress and let's go over here to our uh, appearance. And we're gonna come over here down to widgets. And there we go. So you can see I had now have a new thing in here called sidebar one. And I can drop, let's just for example, let's drop in tags. So there should be a tag cloud here. So I'm gonna grab tags, I'm gonna drop it in. And notice I can give this guy a title. So I'll just call this tag cloud. And this title here, tag cloud, is what this before title and after title are used for. So for example, I could wrap this with a header to tag. And basically WordPress will put that title inside of a header to tag or whatever you wanna do. So I'll just leave that and save to show this in ex as an example. Now, right now I'm not seeing that in my sidebar at all because all I've done is register the sidebar. I'm not actually outputting the sidebar in my sidebar yet. So what we need to do next is we need to then come into our uh, template files and output that in our theme. Now our sidebar is in our section we called header. So I'll come over here to my header.php file and we will come down to the sort of, right, here's that header tag and everything inside of that header tag is what's displayed in this area. So we'll come clear down here at the bottom. Uh, so one quick example is I could have all of these social icons be inside of a widget so people can then customize them from the back end. So we'll probably do that here in a second. But after this, uh, let's see, what's this div tag for? That's the navigation. So after this nav tag, I'll actually do it inside here. So right after this div. So here's where we're going to output uh, that sidebar. So we open some PHP tags, we close some PHP tags, and then we're going to do, the command is called dynamic, dynamic, if I can spell that correctly, sidebar, and you pass as a parameter to this the ID of your sidebar. So in my case, this would be, back in my functions, this is the ID right here. So I'm gonna say sidebar-1. So we'll come back in here to my header, and we'll pass in that sidebar one and save. And sure enough, you can see now, uh, there's all of these tags in the tag cloud. Now it's a little bit goofy here because I'm outputting this inside of my header area, which is a little bit weird, right? Inside of my navigation tag. Uh oh, I've somehow crashed. <laughs> oh, I 
it crashed. Let's reopen this, see if we can get it back open alive for us. VS Code crashed on me. So I could move this maybe outside of my nav, but still inside of my header. Um, but of course, you're going to get some... My template wasn't built initially to have this in place, so I'm going to have some issues here, of course. Uh, but that's um, how that works. So you can add in your little templates areas as you need. So uh, let's now, instead of having this guy just be a random tag cloud, I'm going to make this guy be this unordered list here. So I'll cut this and I'll paste this right here. And remember, this guy has, it's an unordered list and it has these classes on it. So what I could do is I could come back here to my functions file and before widget and after widget, I can add in that code. So I've got to copy and paste that. Got too many files open here again. I got to start closing some of these. So I can just easily go back and forth here. Let's just close all these down really quick. This will just take me a second. All right, so I'm going to copy this unordered list, basically all of that, and that's going to go in my before widget. And then after the widget, I'm just going to close the unordered list. And then I don't really want anything output for the title before and after the title. And we'll save that and refresh here. Whoops, I need to go take my tag cloud out. So we'll go back to the back end. So having that tag cloud really doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna delete the tag cloud and just replace it instead with an arbitrary text field. I'm not gonna have a title, but what this allows me to do is then I can come in here and in my text area, I can just copy and paste all of the code for that uh, in my, whoops, in my header file right here. So all of the code that belongs basically to all of those little unordered lists. So I'm going to copy all that unordered list, cut it out rather, and I'll paste it inside of the dynamic sidebar instead. So I can come in here and just paste all that, hit save. And then when I come over here and refresh, we should still see all those links, but now they're editable from the user's front end. So they can come in here right to the back end. And if they don't have Twitter or don't have GitHub, so let's just take one of these a little hard to kind of see where they start and begin. Let's just take this GitHub one and delete to right there and then save. And now, of course, GitHub disappears, right? So they can edit that from the WordPress admin. And really, you can put anything inside of widget areas. There's all sorts, any of these things you can drag inside of a widget area. So that's kind of how they work. So I've got that one little sidebar one. Let's just add one more to the footer. So we'll come over here and we'll come back to our functions. And I'm just going to copy all of this register sidebar code right here and just paste it because we're going to register one more. This one's going to be called the footer area and we'll call it footer dash one. We'll call this the footer widget area save. Come back to our uh, back end to make sure that's being registered properly. So if we refresh, we should see our sidebar two. And there it is over there. So now we have our second sidebar uh, registered, and that is going to be, um, actually, I'm not sure why the name parameter isn't working. So the name should say, instead of saying sidebar dash one, sidebar two, sidebar one, it should say footer area, sidebar area. So I must have something incorrect here. Let me just double check my notes. I did have something wrong here. So the problem is there's not two separate, um, there's not two separate parameters here, actually. There's just one big array. Um, I was going off notes where I'm actually merging two arrays together. So that's why I got confused when I was looking at my notes. So it's just one big array um, for all the properties here. So all I can do is just simply delete that to not create two arrays, just have one single array of all of those properties. And now when I jump back here and refresh, uh, that should update. There we go. Okay, so now that's looking correct, right? It says sidebar area, there's my description. This one says footer, there's my description. So let's just drag and drop into the footer, uh, maybe some metadata, I don't know. We'll just drop this one in here just to showcase this. Um, and it's saved there. So now I can come into my footer and just like before in my header where you add the dynamic sidebar, I'll copy that. I'll open up my footer.php and inside of the footer area, 
I'll paste that dynamic sidebar. And this one is called footer dash one and save. So now when we refresh over here in our uh, theme here, did I call that footer dash one? I actually don't see it appearing. Let's just inspect, let's double check and make sure we have some code saved there. Um, test, let's save, refresh. Oh, there we go. I just must not have that refreshed. So there's all the metadata, right? Where you can log in and see all these different things that WordPress adds. But now that that's in place, I can put whatever I want in there, right? Maybe I want to put a link to, oh, I don't know. Maybe I want my archives down there. So we can call this the archives and save. And now when I refresh, I get a link to all of my archives. I can click on an archive. And of course, I'm going to get all the blog archives from March. So that uh, that's how you do widget areas inside of WordPress to be able to customize those. So that pretty much brings us to the final piece of this custom WordPress theme tutorial. We just have a couple little things to finish up here. And one is the 404 template. Now, a 404 template is the page that shows when uh, somebody navigates to a link that's broken or something on your website. So what we can do is I'm just going to come in here to my uh, index. and I'm just going to highlight all of this and come over here to the 404 template and paste. And instead of having, there's obviously no posts on the 404. So I can just go ahead and delete this loop. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this uh, navigation. And then I'm just going to fill in this with the header one that says page not found. And then just save this. Now you can come over here. Now in my little preview here, I've just added the page ID that doesn't exist, right? I can say 5555 and hit return. And so I get myself a nice uh, little not found. Now, some things that WordPress developers do is on the not found page, they'll also query the database and maybe pull out a bunch of recent posts. So the user still has something to look at and click. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the search form. So we can come over here and let's go ahead and add the search form. Code for that is just, it's fairly simple here. So I'll open up my PHP tags and I'll go ahead and close these. And it's called get the search form. Actually, it's not get the, it's just get search. Sorry. Get search form like that. And you can see it automatically gives me a search. And now I can search for a page. I can say test and hit search. And this will then take me to my search page. Now you'll notice that my search results page is blank because I haven't yet set that up. So let's go ahead and set that up next. Now that of course is down over here in my file called search. So let's come over to here and this is going to behave very similarly to an archive page. So I'm going to come to my archive page and just copy all of this and come over here to my search page and just paste. And let's just save that. And you can see that's going ahead and pull up uh, my archive page. So anything that has test right is going to show up here. So let's do a different type of search here. I'll just click back here. I think I added a bunch of tags with, um, I can't remember with cool, C-O-O-L. So if I search for that, nope, it's not searching my, uh, tags. I don't even know. I can't remember what I'm on posts and pages were called. Let's come over here and look. Let's go to our um, blog and let's see. So, so if I type in the word fancy, okay, so that post has fancy in the title. So if I come over here to, let's actually go back to the 404. Um, so we'll just uh, go to a page here and then type in one that doesn't exist. 5555. Five, five. Let's search for the word fancy, hit return. And you can see, sure enough, it's giving me the result from the fancy post pulling up on this search page. So that's really all I need to do there. I, of course, could come into the header and maybe I don't want to get the main header. I could change this to say like, you know, search results or something like that. I can modify those however I need. I'm just going to leave that. Of course, you can modify this template as you need, but that's how you get the search. Now, something that I might want to allow is that my visitors can search from any page. So it's common, right, to have maybe a section inside of here in your header with a search form. I'm just going to add one down here in the footer so that the search is available on every single page. So I can come over here to my footer. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can use the exact same thing like we did on the 404 page and hard code in a search form. So I can just copy this, paste that down into my footer area, 
um, and then I'll have that search form. However, you can also do it with widgets. So I'll show you because we already set up a widget area down here. I'll go ahead and show you how you can set that up. I'm logged into the back end. So I'm going to come down here again to my appearance, then over to widgets. And I already have my footer area widget. You can see that has that archives. And you can see from the available widgets over here in the left hand column, there's one called search and we'll search all of the posts. So I can just drag this over here and drop this in my area here and just say search. Go ahead and click on save. And now when I switch back over to my front end and refresh, you'll see the search form appears right here. So now I can come in here and say test and click search and I can just go ahead and search to my heart's content. Of course, the formatting here isn't all formatted because my footer isn't set up to have that all formatting nice and pretty. It'd be nice if I set up maybe three separate uh, areas in my footer, like three columns where I could have three separate widget areas. But again, you can do that all easily with what we've learned here in this uh, series here in this uh, lengthy WordPress. Uh, we could really go on for hours and hours and hours. There's so many things in WordPress and so many functions. We could make this a hundred hour tutorial literally to cover everything that is inside of WordPress. But this should give you enough to get completely started with building your own WordPress theme and converting an existing HTML theme, theme over into a uh, WordPress theme. A few things that we didn't cover, I'll just kind of mention that are somewhat popular uh, inside of themes. One is a thing called custom post types. So you can add those in your custom theme. What that allows for you to do is have your own post types. So instead of just having posts and pages, you could have one called car reviews and you could have one called videos and you can add a new car review. So you can basically customize any of those main hierarchical categories inside of there. Uh, there's another thing called custom fields, which allows you to add custom fields to your posts or pages. So an example of that I mentioned earlier is I could come into a post and say, add new. And maybe I wanted to have, maybe this is a recipe and I wanted to have recipe ingredients. And I want to be able to say this one's five minutes, this one's seven minutes or something like that. You can add custom fields to be able to have like a duration of 10 minutes or, or like we used before an article read time. I could say the read time is six minutes or something like that. And then I can output those custom fields inside of WordPress as well. So again, you can completely customize your theme and go as far as you want. Uh, there's also many, many plugins that do all of this stuff we've been doing manually as well. So search the plugin repository as well. I hope you've learned something. I hope this gives you a great starting point to be building your custom WordPress theme. Ours is pretty much complete here with taking our uh, page and turning it all into a CMS built on WordPress. So all the content is now managed there. I hope you've liked it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and share this content with others so they can benefit as well. And we will see you in the next one.